It's time for From the Short Grass, presented by UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine with Cray Shap. A golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends all while chasing a ball around, trying to put it in a four and one quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is presented by UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. And brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high-yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top-quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here's your host, Trey Shaft. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass, presented by UAMS Health, Orthopedics, and Sports Medicine. I am your host, Trey Schapp. At UAMS Health, Orthopedics, and Sports Medicine, they are dedicated to keeping you in the game. From sports injuries to joint replacement, they provide world-class care right here in Arkansas. Call 501-686-TOSH to schedule your appointment today and get back to living pain-free. That's 501 686 Eight six seven four. The fourth annual Jackson T. Stevens Cup was held at Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club and featured six men's collegiate teams, six women's collegiate teams, and individuals from the HBCUs and military academies. The format is 54 holes of stroke play to determine individual men's and women's champions. Then the top four teams on the men's side and women's side Go to match play to determine the team champions. This year, the Oklahoma wind was whipping at a steady 17 to 20 miles per hour on Monday of competition day with gusts to 30 to 35 miles per hour. The scores were extremely high on Monday, and after play on Tuesday, Carolina Chikara was the lone woman under par thanks to an opening round 66, followed by back-to-back rounds of even par 70, for a 54-hole total of four under par. I had a chance to speak with Carolina after the Wake Forest senior accepted her trophy from Mr. Warren Stevens. Jackson T. Stevens Cup champion, how does that sound? It sounds pretty good, yeah. It's been a couple years since I got an individual win, so I'm very happy. Rounds on Monday were atrocious because of the win, but somehow you managed to shoot four under par. How did you do that? Yeah, I think I, I hit it really nice, both off the tee and onto the green. I only missed three greens, so I gave my t- myself a lot of chances, um, not only for birdie, but also just like easy pars, and I think that really, really helped me. What was your mindset going into the final 18, knowing that you had the lead that you did, and then did it seem like okay? Did you relax a little bit knowing what you had in front of you? Well, I honestly knew I made some a couple birdies yesterday and I had a couple good rounds. So I just tried to make pars, gave myself the easiest par chances possible. And then I knew some birdies were going to drop just because I've, I've been playing well all like fall season, especially like Monday, as you said. So I just try to like stick to the plan and to like a good strategy and just play the numbers and play the shots. Last year, you guys played well at Trinity Forest. You won, and then you come here, and you're the individual champion this year at Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club, so kind of back-to-back for you, if you will, right? Yeah, um, last year was pretty special. Um, This year as well, um, just like this tournament, it's awesome because they find good venues with tough golf courses and tough conditions, so I feel it forces us players to show the best and just perform the best we have and I really enjoy tough courses because I think I hit it good off the tee so I have a big advantage. How was Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club the test that it presented? I think the course itself was a test and then the wind we had Monday was a test Um, but yeah I mean the course is tough the rough is long the pins positions are not easy I think we played as women a little long the course um, but I mean the wind helped yesterday for sure we had some wind helping in us last few holes which are the longest ones um so yeah it's it's been a really tough condition but like a good test of our go- our games you come from a golfing family where does this win rank yeah um I don't know I think it ranks pretty high because I just had like a tough summer like with golf just not feeling my swing and then I've been playing good this fall um so it's pretty high up there um I'm just like really happy my game is back and I feel good I don't have any injuries so I'm happy to be playing golf 
where will you put this nice Tiffany and Company trophy? I think it's going to be it's going to my dorm probably for the next month and a half, and then probably home when I go home for Christmas. Well, good luck in the spring, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you. On the men's side, it took more than 54 holes to determine a champion after William Sides of SMU and Philip Falberg Johansson of Oklahoma State both finished one under par for a 209 total. On the first playoff hole, Sides stuck his second shot to about five feet just left of the hole location and then sank the birdie putt to win the sudden death playoff and claim the men's individual title of the Jackson T. Stevens Cup. I spoke with William about his dramatic victory. William, congratulations, 2024 Jackson T. Stevens Cup champion. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does. I'm pretty happy. So, yeah, it does. After playing through the conditions on Monday and the wind, how did you keep your mind calm and fight through that that you had to play through? Yeah, I mean, growing up in Oklahoma, I've played in the wind a lot and knew that it suited my game. Just I know that how the conditions were going to be. It was going to be a grind out here, and, and it was. It was blowing pretty hard, and the rough's thick. And I knew just to kind of stick to my game, and I would be able to figure it out and get it around here. So it's kind of what my game plan was and was fortunate enough for it to work out that way. The course set up, Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club. Tough test, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's – it's tough. I played in the State Am out here a few years ago, and it is, like, way harder. They made the rough so thick, and greens were so firm, and you just had to be super precise out there. It was really tough pin placements, but it was really fun. I'm glad that they made it this way because it was a great test. Last year, it was a home event, basically, for SMU at Trinity Forest, the Jackson T. Stevens Cup, that is. Kind of winning in your home state has to feel good here this year at Oklahoma City. It does. I'm really thankful and glad I got some family to come out here and support. And first win being in Oklahoma is pretty special, so happy about that. It's your first collegiate win. That has to mean a lot. It does. Yeah, I'm glad to finally get a win, and it's cool to see the progress that I'm making and excited for the team going forward. You got into a playoff. Walk me through when you had to go to 18, and what what were your thoughts as you teed the ball up on the, on the tee? Yeah, I felt – Felt pretty good. I mean, I just come off a nice putt, and I was riding to 18 with my coaches, and they were just we were just chatting it up like normal, just good conversations, and I was pretty calm and just kind of went through the normal process of just a low T straight driver in the fairway and pick a good yardage and use adrenaline to you know get it a little extra further, and yeah, ended up making a three footer. So, what did you have into this kind of uphill shot here on 18? It was 150 and up about five, and I just hit a you know, pitching wedge. I usually hit that around 140, but, you know, juiced up a little bit. So made that mistake a couple of times, but trusted it this time, and it worked out. That three-foot putt, I mean, it was a great shot in there, but you had room there. You could have missed that putt and tapped in for par and still won. Right. Yeah, no, I, I hit it with pretty drip speed there. I don't know if you could tell. It, it crept in that, that edge, but, yeah, I'm glad. I mean – Happy went in, yeah. What kind of momentum can you take from winning this into the spring? Yeah, a lot. I mean, it's exciting, you know, to get it done. And I think our team is coming together nicely. And so I'm ready to kind of get going with the spring and get to national championship as the goal. So this is one step towards that. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Coming up after the break, I will recap the team titles and have an interview with the chairman, Mr. Warren Stevens. I want to thank Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group, Matthew Allen and Blair Allen. They know how to manage hotel properties. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. Find them on the web, bphotels.com, a great sponsor of From the Shortgrass. I'm back after this. Stay with us. At Stevens, our philosophy is to invest every dollar as if it were our own. To seize opportunity. To anticipate rather than react. To deliver constant focus in an ever-changing world and to pursue the objectives of our clients in order to help them reach their financial goals. A proven history of helping companies and individuals. Stevens, member NYSE SIPC. 
UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is taking golf to the next level. As the official orthopedics and sports medicine provider for Razorback Athletics, UAMS Health covers all 19 Razorback sports programs, including golf, and is the official medical partner of the Simmons Bank Championship presented by Stevens. They're also proud to sponsor professional golfers Ken Duke and Glenn Day. Have a golf injury? Call Ortho at 501-686-TOSH to schedule your appointment today. That's 501-686-8674. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass, presented by UAMS Health, Orthopedics, and Sports Medicine. The Oklahoma State men didn't have to have the dramatic flair to win the team title at the Jackson T. Stevens Cup in their first time playing in the event. They beat SMU 4-1 to in the match play portion of the team competition. Oklahoma State, playing just 65 miles from their campus, had fan support as well. I spoke with their head coach, Alan Bratton, after the Cowboys secured the Stevens Cup victory. Coach Bratton, 2024 Jackson T. Stevens Cup champions. How does that sound? Ah, It sounds great. Um, It's always good to win. Uh, Great way to end up up the fall season uh, with a win and and to get to do it at somewhat of a home game was really nice. So hopefully that's a preview of things to come. We get to play the Big 12 this year at Southern Hills just down the road. So uh, it was nice to see some some orange-clad fans. And, uh, and just to see our guys finish things off and, and uh, you know, accomplish the goals we had at the start of the week. I think Monday at the start of the week, it was typical Oklahoma weather, a lot of wind. Your guys played very well in it. Yeah, you know, we've played down here quite a bit over the last year with Karsten being closed, but never in these conditions. They did a great job, Nathan and Tim and everybody at Oklahoma City Country Club had the course in tournament condition. And... Um, Perry Maxwell greens are diabolical, which is great prep for our guys since the Big 12s at Southern Hills and other Perry Maxwell. So um, there was some concern or maybe underestimating the course by some other teams, I think, before we got here that it might not hold up. But with this kind of rough and the greens and then obviously the Oklahoma wind, um, that was a great round that San Diego State shot Monday afternoon. But but it was a great test across the board, and then the conditions were pretty benign today. Setup was a little bit easier, so it was kind of ripe for making birdies. And uh, sometimes that can be hard to do. Even yesterday, you had to flip the switch a little bit because you could be more aggressive than on Monday. And and definitely today, just looking at the cards, it looked like we made made some birdies, which is what you have to do to to win matches. And coming down the stretch, we closed out our matches. So that's uh, great prep. It's what you want as you prepare to be where you want to be at the end of the year. It seemed like on Tuesday it might be a battle of bedlam on the golf course with Oklahoma in the SEC now not being a conference opponent. Would you have liked to have seen that? Sure. I mean, you always want to play against the best teams. They have a very good program this year. They'd already won two times. Uh, But we didn't really care who was there. We wanted to win the – Wanted to win the stroke play, wanted to have an individual win, and then wanted to win the match play. And, and uh, we got almost all of those. Phillip uh, got, you know, good experience and got to replay that match today, and, and, and William beat him. But um, those were our goals at the start of the week. And just with eyes on continuing to get better, get better at stroke play, get better at all our skills. We've got a young team, um, four sophomores and a freshman, and, and it's important to learn to close out matches, and we did that today. How does this format help you prepare for the end of the season next spring in the NCAAs with the stroke play and then the match play? Yeah, it's a great format. It's nice to get to play four rounds of golf in three days. You use three days of competition rather than three rounds in three days. So you get a combination of stroke play and match play, and we got great conditions this week. With We got to play in the wind. You got to play in the calm. And uh, so it's, it's a nice combination, and kudos to the Stevens family for creating this event, to having that vision to honor uh, Warren's dad, Jack. And, uh, you know, they've gone to great venues, and Oklahoma City uh, Country Club stood up very well compared to the others. I'm not sure how your schedule looks next year, but I think it's customary that the champion gets invited back. Shore Acres, north of Chicago, your thoughts on that? I've heard Shore Acres is great. I don't know that it's going to work out for us to play. There's an event that's important to us that's at Southern Hills next fall and a couple others that we've already committed to, but, uh, but I've heard Shore Acres is amazing, so I know it'll be a great event. 
What do you think about your guys that you brought here this week and the play over these three days? Yeah, we've got a good group. Um, they're young but very talented, and we've got some depth, uh, which is nice, nice to see. We've got 11 guys on the team, and 10 of them are freshmen or sophomores. So future looks good, but, uh, you know, we got some guys at home that have done their job to get these guys ready, and our guys did their job this week. So I like the group I've got, and I'm excited to see what we can do the rest of the year. Coach, congratulations again. Yeah, thank you. On the women's side, the number one ranked team in the country, the Arkansas Razorbacks, faced the Oregon Ducks in the match play championship. The title came down to the final match, and Arkansas had a true freshman playing in her first collegiate tournament in her home state. Natalie Blanian was two down with four holes to play in her match and needing to win for the Hogs to win the team title. She birdied 15 to go one down, tied the 16th, and won the 17th to square her match. On the 18th hole, she drained a 25-foot birdie putt with about five feet of break to win her match and for the first time in program history, secure the Stevens Cup for the Hogs. I caught up with Arkansas head coach Shauna Taylor after they called the Hogs in Oklahoma City. Wow. (laughs) I mean, what more can you say? Yeah, you know, um, if you'd have told me August 22nd or whenever we started school, we would have um, won three times this fall of our four events, I'd have said. I mean, I'm not surprised. I just, you never quite know how people are going to transition with freshmen. Um, But I knew we had a a really good staple of of veterans and um, just they're a pleasure to coach. It started off Monday rough, rough, rough. The Oklahoma winds came up and it really made this golf course difficult. Yeah, you know, and that's, I think, where playing at Blessings um, in Fayetteville really helps us prepare for tough. I mean, it's every day we are tested with course management, making good decisions, um, and, you know, you add some wind to it. And so the girls are really prepared when it comes to tough conditions. It's just, you know, the rough is tough here. That's something we don't get a lot of. So um, just really uh, they did a good job of just kind of grinding it out. We didn't make a lot of big numbers. We did make some bogeys. There weren't a lot of birdies to be had, and um, they just they did a good job fighting. When I spoke to you Tuesday morning, I said, all you need to do is just make it into the top two to get into match play. Anything can happen in a match play. What was the mindset on Tuesday to get through those 18 holes? Well, the conditions are better, of course. Um, I think more um, capable of scoring. Um, I would just say, I mean, with Reagan and Clarissa um, – and Maho, we have, our team is really deep and Maho didn't really play good the first two days. So I knew she was due. So I knew if we could just get a couple of putts to drop and hang on and eliminate the big numbers, we'd probably give ourselves a good chance. You went into match play. You had the first pick. You put Kendall Todd out there first and she almost delivered for you. She's just a home run kid. If I could have a bucket full of her, I would. Um, She's just really awesome teammate. She's a hard worker. Um, She's very patient. Doesn't matter who you put her with. So she's a good one to put out first. And then coming down the stretch, on the back end, you had Natalie there, a 17-year-old playing in her first collegiate event for the University of Arkansas. And she performed up to and maybe above what you thought she might be able to give you. Yeah, and I know I knew stroke play it would be probably tough for her. Um, you know, it's a tough golf course that you have to manage it well. And I think she hasn't been with us long enough for to, to get all of that down. But I knew in match play all you got to do is beat somebody one day. And um, that's what I told her. And I said, you know, everybody gets up every day and puts on their pants the same way. It doesn't matter who you're playing. You go out there and be you and own you and give yourself an opportunity. She got off to a good start. Mm-hmm. She did. I mean, she she won the first hole. I think I two up after two, um, a little bit of a roller coaster kind of in the middle. But um, you know, we went back out. We caught her on thirteen. She lost thirteen. I think she lost fourteen, um, and then she hit an amazing pitching wedge on fifteen. Great two putt on sixteen and pretty seventeen and eighteen. I mean, holy cow! From from the rough on seventeen and eighteen. So um, I think it just shows a lot. You know, if you give her the right numbers and give her the right plan. I think she can do it. It's just, you know, that piece over the off season, we're gonna have to work really hard at. Anybody that was watching this on television, I think they could see the fight in this team Mm -hmm. to go into this event as the number one team in the country, have that target on your back, face adversity, get into the match play, and then win it on the last hole has to give you a lot of momentum going into the spring. 
Yeah, it's good to play good in the fall, but it's really good to play good in the spring. So um, I think obviously we go into the off season with um, some momentum, some some opportunity to build off of, of something we've done. And, um, you know, we still have a lot of stuff to work on and a lot of things to teach the girls and a lot of things that we can look at their stats and kind of pick out where we can kind of hone in to gain a shot. And at our level, a half a shot matters. A half a shot times a team is two shots. And you can see it comes down a lot of times to, to you know, inches make a champion. Obviously, this format leads itself to what you would face at the NCAAs if you can get all the way out there to the championship. Stroke play and then match play. And you performed well here. What can that help you do in the spring if you're fortunate enough to get there again? Well, first of all, we've not done a really good job in match play the last couple of years, especially at SECs, and um, and not really put ourselves in a position with match play at the national championship the last few years. But I challenged the team in the car this morning. I said it's time for us to step up and move our program up a notch and become really good. And we need to do that by trying to get better at match play. And today I challenge you guys to go try and do that. And that's, I think, what they needed. Um, we do have to get better at it. I mean, it's it's very momentum driven. You know, we got to, oh, everybody, you're five, five up in five all five matches but I mean they're through six holes there's a lot of golf to be had and they've got to learn to kind of move with the momentum and still put the ball in play and, and don't give shots away and don't give holes away so um, I'm really proud that they accepted the challenge and did a good job with it. What does it mean to be the University of Arkansas women's golf team and win the Jackson T. Stevens Cup? You know, for us, it's like having two home events. We have the Blessings Collegiate in Fayetteville, and then with Mr. Stevens hosting um, the Stevens Cup, I feel like it's like winning another home tournament, although it moves around and we go to different amazing golf courses. And I know how much it makes him proud, and, and that's that makes me proud and proud that, you know, I can lead this team um, on television and get her. I can't wait to look at my phone, all the text messages and people that are so excited to see our program and how good our girls are and just really privileged to be their coach and to get to do this with them every day. He told me he gave the ladies a little bit of a pep talk when you got out of the, the car this morning in the parking lot. He did. Uh, he, we pulled in and he pulled in and he came right over. And uh, just, I, I think he's a true Hog fan at heart and um, really loves the University of Arkansas. And, you know, whenever we can uh, play some really good golf and make, make our alumni or fans proud and sponsors proud, um, that's really, um, really special to us. Congratulations. You're the 2024 Jackson T. Stevens Cup Women's Champions. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you. Whooping. For the first time, the chairman of the Jackson T. Stevens Cup, Warren Stevens, was able to hand the cup to the winning women's team from the University of Arkansas. I spoke with Mr. Stevens after an exciting tournament at Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club. Mr. Stevens, the fourth annual Jackson T. Stevens Cup. I think one word to sum it up. Wow. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I thought it was a great tournament from start to finish. Uh, we had a great field, um, and we had just an unbelievable finish to the women's um, the women's event um, with um, Natalie burying three out of the last five holes to go from two down to winning the match to winning the cup. So uh, that's the kind of stuff you don't see very often. And and I you know love sports, and one of the reasons I love sports is you see stuff like that. And so. This is her first tournament, and um, she's 17 years old. And wow, you know what? 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 She showed a very tough, competitive side, and hit great golf shots. I mean, great golf shots. It was pretty brisk on Monday. The Oklahoma win came yeah. through uh, Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club, and then kind of tame on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I think the players liked it a little more tame than what they saw on Monday. Uh, I'm sure they did. Um, but, you know, the scores didn't really go down that much on, on Tuesday. Um, I, I, we were a little surprised at that. Uh, some of the members here and I were talking about it, and, and we were uh, we thought they'd, they'd go a lot lower. But, you know, the rough here is, is Bermuda, and it's tough, and the greens were 13 and a half and firm. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a great test of golf. And I, I love it because it's – and I'll say this kind of tongue-in-cheek, only 6,900 for the men. But it just shows you don't have to have a 7,500-yard golf course to, to, uh, you know, to, make it, to make it a challenge. The winning, side, the winning score on the men's side was, was, four, uh, was no one under in a playoff. Um, so, you know, it's great. When you look at the fact that the green complexes, and if you have difficult green complexes, that can – kind of bring the golf course back to the players can it 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 sure can and you can 
you know, you can make it even more difficult by putting pins in, in certain places. I mean, that pin on 18 today was in a very tough spot. Uh, I don't know if the viewers could see how close it was to the right side, right green side bunker. Um, but, um, you know, there were a lot of pins that were that were tough, but it's match play today. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can do that's fun in match play. You can you can do that. Oklahoma State wins on the men's side, kind of a, a hometown team, if you will, with yeah. them and Oklahoma playing in, in your tournament this year. But uh, they played well. Well, they played great. You know, uh, they're, they're arguably, really not even arguably, they're the best men's golf program ever. Uh, I think they've won 11 national championships. And so now to have them as a winner of, of the Jackson T. Stevens Cup, that's an honor for us. Um, to, to, you know, they'll put that in their trophy case and people will see it. And if they don't know what the Stevens Cup is, they'll go, well, what's that? Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this is their first time in it. Um, but, uh, you know, SMU uh, played great in, on the men's side uh, all week. And um, they, didn't, they didn't play well today. But they finished third last year at Trinity Forest. They finished second this year. Uh, the Oregon uh, women's team played great and literally was within a putt of of winning the stevens cup in their first time so um that's a you know they, they we, we had a great feel you're a resident of arkansas and to have arkansas in the finals in the first year to get beat by notre dame on the men's side but then to have the women win it this year has to make an arkansas resident proud i would think it it definitely does uh i actually pulled in the parking lot this morning and the, and um, Sean and the girls were getting their, out of their car, and I rolled down the window, and I said, all right, girls, it's about time we had an Arkansas team win this damn thing, so let's go do it. And, and by God, they did do it. Uh, um, and at times it didn't look like they were going to, but, 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 but they did. The patrons came out as well. I thought there were some wonderful crowds out here at Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club. They, they did. I think, you know, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State being in the field helped that. But I also think just a lot of members came out and um, enjoyed being around um, this college golf, which is, which is fabulous, uh, fabulous to watch. I look forward to seeing you at Shore Acres next year. Well, I look forward to being at Shore Acres, too. They're awfully nice to have us. And... Um, we look forward to that. We will be a little bit earlier in the calendar to try to stay away from any inclement weather in Chicago. But uh, uh, it's going to be a great it's going to be a great event. And and you know to have Shore Acres and others reaching out and willing to host this tournament says a lot about the tournament and and uh, what those clubs want to want to do. What do you think your dad might be saying watching down on the Razorbacks winning? Well, I, I, I suspect he's pretty happy about that. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, he's such a believer in amateur golf, and he wanted everybody to have access to golf. You know, he didn't start playing golf till he was 36. So, you know, first tee, Jack Stay, uh, you know, a 17-year-old making the – birdieing three out of the last four holes, making the winning putt. That's the kind of stuff he's, he's loving. And uh, at least I hope he is. I bet he is. Congratulations on a great event. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is taking golf to the next level. As the official orthopedics and sports medicine provider for Razorback Athletics, UAMS Health covers all 19 Razorback sports programs, including golf, and is the official medical partner of the Simmons Bank Championship presented by Stevens. They're also proud to sponsor professional golfers Ken Duke and Glenn Day. Have a golf injury? Call Ortho at 501-686-TOSH to schedule your appointment today. That's 501-686-8674. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group is the leader in the state in managing hotel properties. From El Dorado to Jonesboro to Fayetteville to Kansas City and back home in Little Rock, you will find a Beachwood Pinnacle managed hotel property. Are you looking for a weekend staycation? Book the Hilton Garden Inn located on Rock Street and enjoy the Agassi seven roof top bar with fantastic views of the Little Rock skyline. Open Sunday through Thursday evenings from four to 11 and Friday and Saturday from five to midnight. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. That's all the time we have for this edition of From the Shore Grass, presented by UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. I want to thank Curtis Jeffries for his time over in Oklahoma City and all that he does for the event and what he does for Stevens. Glad to have them as a partner on From the Shore Grass, presented by UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. 
Next year, Shore Acres, just north of Chicago. We will be there, and we'll have a recap after that event. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You have been listening to From the Short Grass, presented by UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network in association with Majestic Cubby Productions.